welcome to All Things LGBTQ+, Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Today is August 19th, I think. <laughs> My oh. name is Jules Cazerta, I use she, her pronouns. Over here is... I'm Naven, I use he, him pronouns. And today, we're going to be talking about body image, a real fun topic for all the teens out there. Because we're all doing great when it comes to body image, 10 out of 10. <laughs> So let's dive right into that. Recently there has been sort of this wave of a body positive movement. I think recently. It's been happening since I've been alive, yeah. I assume. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's been a wave of this body positive movement, which has been great. And it's all about like accepting your body and it's fun stuff. <laughs> but we're going to be talking a little bit about our experiences in like what it's like in high school nowadays, what it's like kind of in that teen mindset. Yeah. Because we're complicated creatures, aren't we, Naven? Yeah. We're very complicated I, I creatures. I think I've only said yeah so far. Yeah, that's all you've said. So complicated. Just, say there, just sit there and say yeah. Yeah. That's all I need you to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Um, so let's delve into that and kind of our experiences. Have you felt any sort of pressures from other people ever? Um, <laughs> <laughs> ever in your entire life? <laughs> as far as body image goes, um... Mm -hmm. I don't, I've never, like, had, I don't think anyone's, like, tried to pressure me before, mm -hmm. but I've definitely felt pressures, um, like, I'm not a very athletic person, um, mm -hmm. and I, um, I just am not the strongest, even though I'm, like, skinny as hell, I'm not, I'm not that skinny, but I'm kind of skinny. You gotta push up the flab to give the muscles, that's what I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty skinny, and, mm -hmm. um, like, I've never been a very strong person, and I've, um... I'm just like, have therapy right now, let's go. <laughs> I don't know, I've just... I'm a certified therapist. <laughs> I've, um, mm -hmm. always, like, felt kind of bad that, like, I'm not very strong, um, mm -hmm. like, I don't, like, work out regularly, or if ever. Mm -hmm. Gym in high school is gonna be fun next Gym year. the worst class ever. It's not, like, it's not even, like, building muscle, it's, like, run constantly don't stop just keep running yeah and then and then be so and don't hug your friends for the rest of the day oh god so it has to be because we don't have like we don't have lockers or like showers really at yeah. our school and, it, and that's not even the topic but like yeah it's gross um like i think similar to what you were saying a little bit the pressures like i've never actually like felt them kind of from other people i've generally only felt them for myself yeah. like i make up these pressures in my brain to, like you have to like be slim or you gotta get that, you know, hourglass. And I think we're gonna have very different body image things here just well, based on who we are. Yeah, well, I mean, like, since I'm, like, trans, mm -hmm. it's a whole... It's a whole other it's thing. It's a whole other thing, yeah. It's, like, not even... Like, I'm, I'm not trying to say it's, like, better or worse. It's just, like... Mm -hmm. It's different. Weird. It's different. <laughs> yeah. Are you putting your feet up on the table? There they are. There they are. Yeah. Legs. <laughs> yeah, so... You're welcome. It, like, I've never, like... Obviously, like, I've never... At high school, there's not, like... It's not like the movies where it's like all that sort of shaming and like these tall, slim girls who like walk in packs of three. Like it's not that. But I always like kind of made it up in a sense, like for myself. Like I was the one putting the pressure on me. And then you touch this a little bit with like sort of being a trans guy. There's a whole other like there's dysphoria and then there's just all body image. So it's like separating the two. And yeah. what's that like? Just like tell me. All um, of it, if you're comfortable. Uh, sure. I, I'll, I'll try. Um, <laughs> it's, as a trans person, it's um, weird, I guess, because um, I have, like, pressures that are generally associated with my birth um, sex. Mm -hmm. um, I was assigned female at birth, but I'm a trans guy. Um, so I am a boy, but I was assigned female. Y'all know how that works. Um, we have this topic already. Go check that out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I've got, I've had pressures. Um, mm -hmm. So you kind of felt both. Yeah, I felt both pressures, but it was also like, it's, it, it, this might not be the most um, clear explanation because I'm Try still, me. Yeah, I'm trying. So yeah, it's no, like, you got it. <laughs> when I was younger and I thought I was a girl, mm -hmm. um, I like didn't really fit in with girls. Um, I, Makes sense. Yeah. I was, I was a jerk, which isn't related to body image, but sort of is related, but I um, would like be like, oh, I don't, I'm not like other girls. Oof. Yeah, I did that too. I went through that phase. 
So I feel like I'm not like other girls, and I try to like, um, I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but basically I, when I thought I was a girl, I would feel pressures from like, um, you know, pressures to like look pretty, mm -hmm. be a girl, long hair, I had short hair for a very long time. And then also... Best kind of hair. <laughs> hell yeah. And also, um, I would, f even when I was younger, before I knew I was trans, mm -hmm. I would feel pressures to like look masculine. Yeah. Um, and like have a more masculine body, sort of, if that made sense, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And like, no, again, no one was putting those pressures on me, but it's just like I saw like standards for men, mm -hmm. standards for boys, and I put them on myself because I am yeah, boy. I am boy. Yes. And then like, this is kind of it. Obviously, I'm not like trans, but <laughs> um, you were talking about a little bit like, like the pressures of being masculine. And like, even I felt that as a woman, like, and I present, I can present kind of more masculine. That's not like I'm a butch occasionally, <laughs> day to day. Yeah. Um, and then, like, once you kind of, like, get into that, people will see you wearing a dress. And they're like, what the hell? Like, who are you now? And yeah. I'm like, I can wear both, and I can look fantastic in both. <laughs> I, I have, I, was, <laughs> I mean, yes, you do. Thank you. Yeah. Ten out of ten. I have a, <laughs> out of ten. I have a um, sort mm -hmm. of comment about that is, like, um, before I knew I was a boy and before I transitioned, mm -hmm. um, I was, like, very against doing anything feminine, um, especially, like, like, I was sort of feminine when I was, like, five and six, but, like, when I got older, like, like, five and six. I don't get how toddlers can be, like, feminine or masculine, because I'm, like, how, like, a lot of things. But, <laughs> yeah, um, but anyway, like, mm -hmm. as soon as I turned, like, seven or eight in that stretch of time till I was about 13, I was, like, very against doing, like, wearing any feminine clothing. That's, that was my whole I'm not like other girls phase. Now I'm not All a those girl. years. They would look so good. <laughs> Flashback. Oh god. Um, and like, but mm -hmm. now that I've transitioned, um, I'm mm -hmm. more. I'm actually comfortable doing feminine things. Like I'm wearing makeup right now. Ten, out of ten makeup skills. Hi, folks. Hi. I didn't have um, eyeliner or mascara, so I'm just wearing or eyeshadow. I'm just wearing blush and highlighter. On your eye. Yeah. Skill. Thank you. And Looks good. Um, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but and it was just like. I don't know, figuring out that I was a boy, but also, like, an androgynous sort of boy was um, really freeing for me, and it sort of took a lot of pressures off of, like, having to be masculine or having to be feminine, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, like, I've noticed that based on, like, you, just because obviously we're friends outside of this. Yeah. But, like, I've just noticed that, and it's 10 out of 10. Thank Love you. it. Thank you. Yeah, but I feel like a lot of the times with sort of, like, because, again, I can only speak from, like, a female's perspective once you kind of like slightly shift to like a box like once you even like show a remote interest people are like shocked when you can also be like oh I also am like kind of, I like wearing makeup and like I like you know kind of showing off my body <laughs> yeah and like people are like wait what the hell and I'm like just because I wear like baggy t-shirts on days does not mean I'm completely insecure or like I can't ever express that sort of femininity yeah and this topic isn't about masculine and feminine but we're going there th yeah we're going there anyways, yeah because it's, sort, it. it's sort of related it's definitely related especially and between our two experiences yeah and um also mm -hmm. um i remember that the last week of school um like retake week where there was not a ton of kids in the school freshman year yeah freshman year okay and there was um like i was just hanging out with my friends mostly because i had a lot of free time and i was hanging out in the art room a lot and I found these like dresses mm -hmm. that were pretty nice. Like one of them was like, um, it doesn't matter, but basically <laughs> like I was just like putting them on and I was like having fun and stuff. And I was also wearing a crop top that day and it was like a whole thing. <laughs> and Boys and crop tops are so cute. I'm sorry. I, mm, tea. My bisexuality um, is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I remember it was just like a really like yeah. fun day and I just like got to like wear these dresses and I have them like I have them at my house mm -hmm. and um I, I went to do a Latin retake just like in, in, a in a dress it was fun I bet our Latin teacher loved it yeah he, like he was just like sub naming hey yeah he didn't um, I love the no reaction like those yeah. are my favorite things like when you're wearing something like slightly different obviously it's a little bit different for the two of us yeah. but like when I'm wearing something that I normally wouldn't wear I just love not having any comments yeah I'm like oh I can do this every day yeah mm -hmm. and and like also slightly early, then we can get back to the topics because <laughs> we're getting back to body image. Off track. 
is that like I um for the Fourth of July parade I yeah I was there it was cute I loved it it was a great moment thank you um, <laughs> I was like wearing like a full face of makeup um like really intense and mm -hmm. um, a dress mm -hmm. and um I and like I I felt like it was easier to just say like oh I'm in drag but it was really just like I just wanted to wear a dress yeah. Like, Screw that, it. like, that doesn't make me any less of a boy, and mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just wanted to wear a dress. And Protect I, feminine voice. And I looked, and I looked cute. Yeah, so 10 out of 10. Thank you. I love that confidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have a list here, if y'all can't tell by me tapping my phone, or if you can see it. I do have a list. Next thing on my list, we can, we can ha I think we've kind of a tiny bit touched on, is improving your body image. And, like, one of those things for me is, like, makeup. Like that makes me feel 10 times more confident. And people will always like get on my case about that. Whenever I say, oh, like try makeup, it makes me feel more confident. They're like, why don't we don't promote makeup to girls? And I'm like, <laughs> it's literally marketed. Like that's what, that's what you're, it's like it, mm. anyways. Yeah. Improving your body image. One thing that helps with me is like makeup or like wearing more like revealing things. Yeah. Um, for me, like makeup, like as far mm -hmm. as makeup goes, um, mm -hmm. like I'm wearing something like really toned down, but this usually isn't what I wear. You got the glitter on your eyes, it's nice. Ow. <laughs> like I'll usually wear something like really intense. It's like between like... Full what, face of drag or nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's like between full face of drag and yeah, and like what like um, your average woman who wears makeup wears on a daily basis. It's like I don't go mm -hmm. like the nine yards of like flattening out my eyebrows and like drawing like them the Elmer's high. glue stick yeah um, I don't go that far mm -hmm. but um you I could I probably could um you I could rock it I don't I don't want to peel glue off my eyebrows it doesn't, it doesn't look like, anyways yeah <laughs> but um it's just like doing something kind of like wacky mm -hmm. crazy and um just like unexpected it's kind of liberating right yeah it's kind of like screw it I'm gonna put yeah. bright purple on my eyelids because that's what I want to do today yeah and like it's obviously not the same for any everyone mm -hmm. but is that's how it works for us yeah at least for me yeah. or like um like speaking from like a kind of like more insecure stand like points like you know you can't you kind of put on a character that's like confident obviously like that's what I do at least and then like for someone who is more insecure, like kind of building that up is really difficult. Cause like I started at like the absolute minimum. Like I was like, eh, like I can survive looking like this, but like I won't be happy about it. <laughs> and like building that up took years and years and years and years. And like, I'm still not quite there. Cause a lot of it is just kind of like faking it till you make it, you know? Yeah. Like you put on that confidence and eventually it becomes like um, na like second nature to you. Yeah. But um, from that kind of insecure standpoint, like what do you do to like, do you do anything? Cause I know I do. Um, for me, um, what tips do you have for someone who's trying to like get more positive around their body? Um, Does that make sense? Was that a question? Yeah, no, I, I, I know what you mean. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So one thing that I've seen people mm -hmm. say a lot um, is like just appreciating the parts of your body, mm -hmm. just like in general. Um, or like what it does for you? Yeah. Um, this is mostly, uh, this is actually a tip for coping for, with dysphoria. So, hi guys. Coming at me with those dysphoria tips. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, one thing I've heard a lot is um, just for an example, like um, trans guys um, sometimes have like smaller hands and they're like small and feminine. And um, one thing I've seen is like people like being like just like appreciate what your hands do for you mm -hmm. and um, one of my favorites is like all the like cute animals they've touched and pet. That's so cute. I know. Oh my god. Yeah and like like my hands are kind of I, I have. You have fairly large hands. I have fairly large hands so that hasn't been an issue for me mm -hmm. but um, I don't know it's just like appreciating the parts of your body that um, mm -hmm. just appreciating what they do for you. Um, not because of how they look, because of what they're, like, they keep, they're keeping you going, you know? Yeah, like what their function is. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's personally helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I also go to, um, I also have a therapist who Shout I... Shout out to David's therapist. Um, we have the same therapist. Hell yeah. <laughs> Love her. Um, but I, I do, I, um, that's, like, if you do have issues mm -hmm. with body image... And stuff it definitely helps to talk to a therapist mm -hmm. um, and like body image tips can only help you so much yeah <laughs> so like yeah
but those are some that's one thing that's helped me a lot mm-hmm. um i think like, for me like this is gonna sound a little weird and a little like kind of what the hell are you talking about jules but like stick with it i promise after you shower just like get in front of a mirror and just be like okay this is what i look like like just kind of like look at it and be like okay that's mine like it's yeah. it's mine and i'm never getting out of it like i'm this is like i'm not gonna wake up one day in someone else's body like i'm not gonna wake up and have the body that i want like this is how i am forever like obviously you can change it to a certain extent but just kind of like looking at it and being like okay that's me like that's what i get that's the cards i've been dealt it's awesome yeah. and just kind of spending time with you as you yeah and I feel like you're just doing like body dysmorphia and I'm doing gender dysphoria because I have something that connects to that to help with dysphoria. Is that body dysmorphia? Or, I don't know. but like Just like body but, image and you're yeah. kind of like, well, because you have dysphoria, I don't. <laughs> um, so, mm -hmm. I mean, that does help me cope with the fact that like, um, like I'm at the very start of my medical transition and that like... probably wouldn't help a trans guy. Yeah, I so... I just realized that it wouldn't really help. So it's like... Um, I, well, I don't, well, I don't, like, like, stand buck-ass naked in front of the I mirror. I don't, wait, no, I don't do that. <laughs> okay, I know, I'm kidding. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm That's not what I was assuming. <laughs> that was a joke. You're wearing undergarments. Okay. <laughs> Continue. Yeah. Or I would. Yeah. Yeah, so, like. Continue. For me, it's, like. <laughs> Continue. Um. For me, it's like um, also just like sort of um, part of dysphoria can mean you feel disconnected from your body, mm -hmm. which is something I've experienced, and it's like really weird and surreal. Mm -hmm. And it's just like trying to ground yourself and be like, okay, this is the body. I'm do you in. do that body scan thing? Yeah. Shout out to our therapist. Love you. She taught me that too. And yeah. like, I don't have dysphoria, but I do. Like, I've always to cope with kind of my body image issues. I would just completely separate. I'd be like, my brain and like my mind is something completely different. It's not part of this. Yeah. And like, essentially what you do in a body scan is you just sit and you like will go through all the different parts of your body and be like, okay, what do my feet feel like? Like, what am I? And you slowly move up. And then at the end, you just feel it all at once and it like kind of puts you back in your body. Yeah. And like, I do the same thing, like not for it, for it, just because it's how I am. Yeah. I just separate them and then like getting back in there yeah. and like grounding yourself. Yeah, so, like, for me, it might mm -hmm. be, like, like, I don't know, I'll just, like, be wearing shorts and, like, a binder and, and like, be, like, okay, I'm going to be able to, like, change this. There are parts of my body that I will be able to medically change, mm -hmm. but for now... This is what I'm, I have. Yeah, this is what I have. It's working for me. And it's sort of, like, going it's back It's working to, for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of going back to that whole, like, appreciating what your body does for mm -hmm. you. It's, like, I'll sort of do that and be, like, okay... Um, here, like, mm. here's the parts of my body I like, here's parts I don't like so much, but here's what they do for me. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, seeing it and seeing my face and, like... Connecting the Connecting two. everything. Yeah, because, like, I don't know, but I don't know if this is just a me thing, but, like, when I disconnect my body um, from, like, my brain, it's, like, my face goes with it and the, my body just kind of, like, disconnected. Floats. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's like I associate like my face and my brain together, and my body just well, because like, your brain's like in your face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in your head, not your face. Yeah, but um, <laughs> kind of like like just being with your body too, and like you obviously there's some things you can change medically or just by like eating different or um, working out, and like there are things like that obviously. But while you're also sitting with your like body and kind of doing that process, you sit and you like you kind of realize things that like you may not like, but you literally cannot change like. For example, I have hip dips, which are a huge thing, uh, especially with pe like girls my age, especially with women, I've noticed, is that um, hip dips are essentially, I don't really have that hourglass shape. I kind of curve, and then my hips go in, and then my thighs come out, and it's like a little divot, right? It's a hip dip. Yeah. And you see constantly like, oh, exercises to change your hip dips, or like, People are always like, exercise will fix that. And first of all, that's just a blatant lie because the more you exercise, the more defined they'll get because you'll be more toned. <laughs> so don't listen to that. Second of all, it's literally just how my pelvic bone is sitting. Like, it's just genetic. Like, my pelvic bone sits higher up than someone with that kind of, like, smooth sort of fit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, not to sound weird, but, like, 
hip dips are kind of cute. Like, thank you. Yeah. This whole episode is just us suddenly flirting with each other. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's like one thing that you kind of notice when you're sitting there. And obviously, there, again, there are things you can change, but like that kind of dip or having a little bit more pudge here, it's con all women have it. Also cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all women have it to literally to protect your uterus. <laughs> like you cannot change that. Like there's a flat stomach is achievable, but like. You're really gonna put that much damn work into getting a flat stomach yeah. when this is like natural. It's also like something I've learned from um, doing research about hormone treatments and. I'm, I'm, I'm not on my phone. I'm getting the list back up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> something I've learned about hormone replacement therapy, which is what trans people go on, is that um, like people who are assigned female at birth mm. and who produce estrogen, like it's like very hard for them to build muscle compared to someone who's assigned male at birth. And it produces like or like more testosterone, more estrogen. Because obviously yeah. we have both. Yeah, which some people don't know. It concerns me. <laughs> and um, the thing um, I've learned is that like when trans guys or um, non-binary people who want to go on testosterone go on testosterone, it's like it becomes way easier for them to build muscle mm -hmm. and like um, not really lose weight, but like it's really hard for women to lose weight. Yeah, especially when you factor in cycles, like. Once a, like once a month, you're gonna just feel disgusting and it's gonna be so hard for you to continue that kind of like weight loss that you've been on. So essentially, here's my graph. Men lose weight like this. Women lose weight like this. Yeah. It's fun. But basically my point we're is that- We're assigned women and men. You, biologically female, biologically male. Y'all know what we're saying. Oh, I thought you were pointing at the wall. Anyways. Yeah, so anyways, but um, I don't know, just what I've learned from researching hormone replacement therapy is that, like, testosterone just makes it way easier for you to build muscle, mm -hmm. which also means that, like, people who are assigned female at birth, like... Have a harder time. Have a harder time, like, um, like losing belly fat or, like, building muscles. It's there to protect you. Yeah. Um, another thing that, like, everybody has, but you, I feel like I see women being a lot more insecure about, stretch marks. Cute as hell, by the way. <laughs> Stretch marks, literally everyone has them, like men, women, all of us. We're just here to tell everyone you're cute. Yeah, literally that you. is the moral of this, is like, you're cute. <laughs> you're welcome. But stretch marks, and again, I only really see women being more insecure about this, because like, you know, men hide their feelings. It's kind of the whole thing. Like, yeah. men are insecure too, but they don't really yeah. talk about it. Yeah. But women with stretch marks are just like really insecure and there are like creams and stuff that you can put on your stretch marks. And if you think about it, it's stupid. Cause everybody has stretch marks. When women, cause like you start as a baby and you stretch to four foot, five foot, six foot, depending on how tall you get. Of course your body's gonna have some marks from that. Yeah, it's like, um, like I don't know, acne scars, um, scars in general, um, freckles, stuff freckles like that. Freckles are so cute. Yeah, I don't. Literally, if cause you're freckles, cute. Y'all are cute. Um, y'all have it's, anything. Y'all are cute. Yeah. Bisexuals are just sitting here being like, God damn it, everyone's cute. Not to sound like every bisexual ever, but y'all are cute. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> we are so on topic today. Yeah. No. This is a perfect episode. Yeah. You're all cute. But it's guys. just a fact. Um, I touched on this a little bit. Um, men's body image and kind of how... You know, men aren't expected to ever really be insecure, but like, of course they are. Cause, hi, Naven. Hi. This is where you come into play. Cause yeah. obviously I'm a woman. In yeah. case you didn't know. <laughs> so, um, you want me to just go just off? Just go off. Okay. Yeah. That's what so the show is for. yeah, I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember any any statistics, obviously, but um, um, men, um, like, also, um, mm -hmm. men can like get like these eating disorders where it's yes. like they um like obviously like bulimia and anorexia and bulimia and anorexia are the most common ones yeah they'll like obviously get eating disorders a lot and they'll mm -hmm. also do this um they'll they'll get this thing i can't remember what it's called but they'll basically like get so obsessed with being ex like exercise being addiction. fit and like yeah exercise addiction is another form of eating disorders that people generally don't get diagnosed because they're like oh it's healthy i'm exercising so they yeah. trick themselves Whereas with anorexia and bulimia, a lot of the time people know what they're doing is wrong. Exercise addiction, it's a lot harder to tell that you're actually hurting yourself. Yeah, and it's like basically you just like exercise to the point where you're like unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's... Um, is, is that more common in men? 
I think, uh, yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. You could probably, because that's, like, the ideal man is, like, fit and, like, huge. And, like, those men that you see with those, like, huge ass, like, watermelons on They're their cute, arms. They're cute, but not my type. No, no type. Um... Aren't healthy. But the point is, everyone's, everyone's cute. cute. Everyone's but cute. But they're not healthy. Yeah. Like those actors that you see that has like these six these six packs only look like that for like a day. And they're also like really greased up. They're greased up. <laughs> they're dehydrated. They consume yeah. like five raw eggs. Yeah. Like to get that de- definition, they aren't drinking anything, and it's so unhealthy. And then when like a picture leaks of this guy who people are used to seeing with these like six packs, when they're a picture leaks of them just like on a normal day when they're not filming, everyone's yeah. like, oh, they were like, dad bod. And I'm like, that's not a dad bod. He still has abs. It's just protected by this layer of fat because that's what your body does. Yeah. It's protecting you. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. That was a whole rant. <laughs> and I'm it, like, it's not helping you guys. Yeah. And we love you. You're all cute and we want, we want you to stay here. Mm. And then cute. like, there's that where it's like, they're so big and it's unhealthy and people are shaming them when they even remotely relax or stop flexing. And there's also, like, there is, like, obviously fat shaming, which people talk about all the time, and then skinny shaming, which is a whole thing. Yeah. Um, like, oh, God, skinny shaming is such a thing for me. Yeah, before we, before we go, go into topic, that, I just want to jump continue. back to the um, men with eating disorders, is that it's also, like, talked about a lot less, mm-hmm. partially because of um, men are supposed to be strong. And Tough, no emotions. No emotions. And also it's, um, like... Y'all can't cry. <laughs> Real men cry. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a topic. Anyways. But it's uh, also, like, um, like women's eating disorders, like, get a lot more attention. Like, obviously, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying, like, one gender needs more attention than the other. It's just, mm-hmm. like, um, women's eating, like, women's eating disorders are taken a lot media, more seriously. A lot. Yeah. And it's, um, mm-hmm. and then, like, when men have eating disorders, it's kind of like, ew, we mm-hmm. don't want to hear about that. Like, get over it. Like, you're fine. You're fine. Like, guys aren't allowed to be insecure. Yeah. Also... Um, with women, I feel like people want us to be insecure, which like makes me so uncomfortable. Cause like obviously this is marketed the media like oh you need to be this, this is a bad thing you need to look like this. But I've spoken to guys that are like oh when girls are insecure it's so cute, and I'm like shut the hell up, that's, like that's weird and creepy. Stop it. Yikes. Um, I hear I've heard that so much and it's bizarre to me. From who? who? We won't what's what's their name? I, I just want to talk. We're I just, not want, I just want to talk to them. <laughs> name it is Protective Dad. Anyway, but like I hear that constantly, and I'm like, what the hell? You want people to be this uncomfortable? Yeah, and then it's also, and it's also like when strong women are portrayed in the media, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, they're shrill, bossy, bossy. Yeah, and it's like. Oof. Yeah, like, a lot that. of female politicians get called, like, shrill or something. Like, oh, their voices are so annoying. Oh, they're so bossy. I can't listen to them. And it's just, it's just sexism. Just shut up. It's just sexism. Yeah, Stop talking. Yeah, it's just sexism. Like, it, oh, God, body image, especially, I feel like that kind of comes out. Because it, like, obviously, it's put on men a lot. But I feel like in the media, it's a lot more put on women. Like, men, it's kind of more, yeah. like, subtle, like, backhand. Yeah, kinda, like, yeah, it's not talked about as much It's either, not, yeah. yeah. But, like, in women, it's, like, you just see that constantly. Like, you go on, a girl posts a picture on Instagram, some celebrity. You go into the comment section, and it's, like, oh. Yeah. She shouldn't be wearing that. She shouldn't, she doesn't, her body doesn't look good in that. Yeah, and then weird sexual comments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we mentioned skinny shaming, which is the thing that I could write about forever. People assume that when you're skinny, I'm, which I'm not, but the people, anyone who is, is not insecure, that they are perfectly comfortable in their body, that they're happy the way they are, or people take it to a whole other extreme and accuse people of having eating disorders because yeah. they're slim. First of all, anyone can be insecure. It doesn't matter their body type. You can be bigger and perfectly happy with your body. You could be small and insecure. You can be big and insecure. You can be all of it and insecure. Yeah. We're all insecure. And then on the other hand, people are accusing them of having eating disorders. It's like probably they could and like it comes from a place of concern but like not but really, like not but really like, but like kind of kind of but not really and yeah. also like it's 
toxic and harmful, and it's just like don't ever really don't make comments about someone's body, whether they're skinny, whether they're big, whether they're in between. Don't comment also, on it. Also, like not only skinny people have eating disorders. Mm -hmm. Um, like I can't remember the name, but like there's one where you just like binge and purge eat. That's bulimia. Bulimia, right? Bulimia. It's actually kind of interesting because you actually tend to gain. You not you're not losing weight when you do that because yeah. like the calories are still going in and then you're puff like you're bloating up from the throwing up and like you think yeah. that it's helping you but it's not yeah but it's like like any body type anyone can have an eating disorder mm -hmm. and, just because yeah. someone's bigger doesn't mean that their eating disorder is any less serious right yeah doesn't good because they don't look you can't see their bones does not mean they aren't sick right yeah hmm that's what I talk about um da -da 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 -da. and then like also, like, confusing how you look with health. Like, people assume that if you're on the bigger side, you're unhealthy, which could be true. And obviously, you want to stay healthy. And there's a certain point when you reach a certain weight where you're no longer able to, like, be healthy. Yeah. Because, like, like, weight at every size. High weight and low weight, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weight at every size. And then people loved it. Like, a health at every size isn't actually a possibility. Because when you reach a certain size and you can hardly move you are not healthy yeah. and I there's in that kind of body positive movement that we talked about at the beginning people are confusing body positivity and like health because yeah. like you can love your body and like rock it but if you're unhealthy you kind of need to like take a step back and be like this is just because I like my body and I'm, com I'm comfortable in it yeah. I might need to change a few things nice segue <sighs> segue into what what was my segue into like toxic body positivity toxic body positivity <laughs> so just like every movement there's a toxic side yay we love it <laughs> um just like, like i just talked about this a little bit is health at every size is not possible like there is a time there's a point where you reach where it's no longer healthy for you to be that yeah skinny or big either way like if you're 90 pounds and you're a 20 year old woman you're not healthy <laughs> Yeah. If you're... Like, 90 pounds, pounds in my size, you're not healthy. 90 pounds at any size, you're probably not healthy unless it's like a toddler. Toddlers are heavier than that. Anyways, but y'all you, you get the point. Yeah. Y'all get the point. If you're too, if you're like 90 pounds, probably not healthy. If you're 500 pounds, probably not healthy. Yeah. Like, there's a range where that's where health lives. Yeah. And it's, um... It's not saying that, like, oh, you're disgusting because you're bigger. It's just, like, you need to... There are things that you need to work on to make sure you're living a good life. Yeah. I've seen a lot of, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people, like, confuse toxic body positivity and just, like, normal body positivity. Mm -hmm. Like, someone who might be on, like, the heavier side is like, yay, I love my body. Um, and then, like, this is, like, on Instagram. Like, they'll be in the caption, like, my, like, my body is great. Um, yeehaw, feeling great today. Yeehaw. They all say that. And then That's in what, the comments... <laughs> In the comments, you'll see, like... You're like, promoting obesity. How dare you? Yeah, it's, like, all of that. And it's, like, you don't know what this person's, like, mm -hmm. dealing with. And, like, they might be working on their way. You don't mm -hmm. know. It's none of your business. And it's... Mm -hmm. And, like, even if you think it's coming out of a place of concern, it's, like, you're a stranger on Instagram. They don't probably... Don't comment on people's bodies. Yeah, you're... Ever. Yeah, you're pro... Like, they're probably not going to care. And it's, like, mm -hmm. sure, you might be, like, looking out for them, but also, like, why... Why should they listen to you? Mm -hmm. Like, like it's like, oh, their doctors are telling them that they're, they're on healthy weight. Their family's like, um, you're on a healthy weight. We're concerned. But then it's like the one person on their Instagram post who comments, I, th I think you're overweight. Maybe get some help. It's like, oh. That's going to be the one that yeah. flips their whole life around. Exactly. They're going to become a vegan. Yeah. And be <laughs> insanely thin. I can rant about vegans. I won't, though. Um, but that, yeah, and it's like. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's and just like you can be concerned about someone's health without like being a dick. Being weird. Yeah, I'm being a dick. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I did. Um, and then on the other hand, it's like if. I don't know how to phrase this. There are people in the body positive movement on the toxic side that are sort of these like public fig, these like figureheads of this movement who are promoting. They who are actually promoting unhealthy sizes. Yeah. And that's where it really becomes an issue is like if if anyone is in their comics being like, maybe, like maybe. No. Maybe, <laughs> like maybe it's not the best. Maybe, because 
I saw this um situation online where a girl was posting her um weight transformation and she was posting her like weight loss pictures and she was like, oh, I feel great about my body. Like I don't, I didn't need to lose weight, but I did because it made me happier. Yeah. And this person who was a figurehead of the body positive movement then attacked that girl because she was like, you're promoting being thin. You're not body positive, and it's like body positive should be for everyone. Yeah, and it's like as long as she's like in a healthy range mm -hmm. of weight. It's health that's important. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you look like. Yeah, as long as she's like not dipping below like, mm -hmm. like too low, it's fine. And um, another thing I've seen is um. Do you know the sh have you seen the show Queer Eye? Have I seen the show Queer Eye? Yes, I've seen the show Queer Eye. <laughs> so you know how um so I'm just going to if any of y'all at home have not seen it, watch it. Watch it. It's a great show. Um I makes me cry sometimes. Um like like once, but it's a really good show. Um and um there's this one part of the show um there's this one guy on the show who helps out with fashion. And one of the things he'll do is, um, if someone has like a bigger um, body type or is just like a little larger, he'll be like, "Oh, here's some clothes that like, um, like especially if the person's talk about talked about their insecurity earlier on the show, and mm -hmm. then like once they meet with this guy, his name's Tan France. Once they meet with Tan, love him. Um, I love him too. He's great. <laughs> once they meet with him, um, he'll be like, "So you've talked about how you're insecure about this part of your body. So I've gotten some clothes that like." don't draw attention to that and make you look a little slimmer. Mm -hmm. And I saw someone like... Oh, would they be... Oh, no. I saw them, someone attacking and be like, Queer Eye is promoting um, fat-phobic Oh, my God, stuff. that word. Yeah, so they're like, it's promoting fat-phobia by making... Um, by, like, assuming that people need slimming clothes. And I was like... It's like, no. Like, no. Ha like... Queer Eye is literally the purest show ever. And, like, wearing clothes that make you feel more confident is not fat phobic. Yeah. Like people, again, in a lot of toxic communities, they'll throw around a lot of words that end in phobic. Yeah. All of them. Fat phobic is one of them. And it's like, I'm not because I'm promoting health. Yeah. I'm not because I wear clothes that are tighter around the waist because they give me that kind of look that I want. Yeah. And also, um, oh, shoot. What were you gonna say? I forgot. Okay. Oh yeah, another thing <laughs> is that um, on on Queer Eye they like, not there's f five guys and like none of them ever are like you need to um like one guy's like you need to eat better but he's never like it's because you're fat. Mm -hmm. He's like you're. It's for health. Yeah, it's for health. And like they're never like fat shaming or anything. They're never like you need to lose weight. And like the only time they ever end up in a gym like working out is if the guy if the person before I s specifically been like, I want to work out more. That's one of my goals. Can mm. you help me with that? Mm. Like, they, like, never are fat shaming anyone in the mm. entire show. And for, like, someone to be like, this is what's happening. Listen to me. It's, like, really frustrating. It's like, I've watched every episode of this show, and I've <laughs> never seen that. Yeah. People, people are very insecure. And when they see something that could even be slightly kind of, you know, ha problematic. You know. You know, <laughs> problematic, they will jump on that. And in any community that you see, there are always going to be those people who are really, really, really intense about it. Yeah. And that's when it reaches toxic. I could rant forever about communities and the internet and all of it because there's so much And a lot of it shit. spawns from the internet because, like, no one can stop you from saying anything. Mm -hmm. Also, yes. like, it spawns on the internet because it kind of gives you this outlet. Like, that person who was, like, getting on Tan's case would not, like, fly to wherever the hell yeah. he lives and be, like, you're fat phobic. Yeah, it's, like, but not, they can like, now. Yeah, it, and, like, like, she didn't, like, specifically call him out and be, like, mm -hmm. he's fat phobic. It was just, like, queer eye in general is fat phobic. And I was, like, no. It's, like, <laughs> they're promoting health. Yeah. And, like, again, you see that online is, like, when anyone promotes health. Not even, like, being tiny. It's when they're promoting health, they'll get, like, attacked. And it's like, no. Yeah. Like, drink a glass of water, take a nap, and then come back and have a conversation. Yeah. It's like, we're going to be chill. Yeah. We're going to be calm. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find my list. Yeah. It's, ah! Uh, I don't know. And I mean, like, 
Mm -hmm. The body positive movement has obviously done a lot of good, but there's always a toxic part of it, and we're just focusing on that right mm -hmm. now. Body positive movement is so, so, so important yeah. to have that. Yeah, because, like, it's helped, like, so many people. It's helped so many people. It's helped me. Yeah. It's, like, ooh. It, body positive, body positive, yeah. Body positivity is so, so, so important. You should be able to feel comfortable in the body you're in. You should see that represented. You should be able to see hip dips in the media, stretch marks, acne scars. It should all be there. Yeah. But in any community, there's going to be someone. There's going to be a collective bunch of people that just take it just too far, just a step too far. And it's like really or, or, back. Or like a whole staircase too far. Or like far. a staircase yeah. too far. Yeah. And then it's like, get back down here. <laughs> like this is not what this was created for. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. <laughs> Should we end this? Are we done? Do you have anything else on, on my list? Uh, we talked a little bit about improving your body image. I feel like we can go back on that to kind of like circle back around. End it positively. Your body is in, like uh, it's great because if you think about how complex human bodies are, all about it's doing constantly, keeping you alive, protecting you. That little fat around your stomach is there for a reason. It's protecting you. And it's cute. And it's cute, according <laughs> to Naven. There's your um, validation. Naven thinks you're cute. <laughs> Love you guys. And like all these things that people are really insecure about that are just like, you know, they're there. There's no issue. Yeah. I'm I'm guilty of all of this too. Yeah. Like of course I am. I'm sure you're guilty of anything you really talked about a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Cause it's like we're all insecure, but we're all cute. Yeah. We're all cute. That's how I think we should end this. Yeah. We're all cute. <laughs> yes, you are all cute. You're cute. Your stretch marks are cute. Your, your chub is cute. Yeah. Your hip dips. These these two bisexuals. Being bisexual together, mm. think you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> all right well this has been all things lgbtq plus take your feet off the table youth, youth edition. edition thank you so much and we will see you next time